Again, I think the election has to be vetted. We have to under, understand. We, I, I don't think we can operate uh, under the threat uh, or reward of potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars being spent on the next city council elections if we do or do not uh, fall into favor with with a certain individual or a small group of individuals. Um, there was not a, a consistent political ideology. That, that campaign was very cynical. It, it rewarded one candidate for being liberal and progressive and then chastised another for being liberal and progressive. So it wasn't that somebody was spending all that money because they believed in that particular political ideology. Something else was at play. I don't think it's, it's, the, it's it, the identity of this individual is now spreading. It's going to come out, and I don't think it can be stopped. And so I would now vet that uh, very, uh, uh, a very prominent individual has, has explained to me how that, that process worked. Uh, other people have said the same name. Uh, and uh, I, I uh, presented to John Williams two months ago that many people who are in a position to know are indicating that the, the primary ideological and financial force behind this election campaign was Larry Nichols. I asked John Williams, that people are saying this, you need to get, take a message to him that if this is not true, you need to give him a chance to defend himself. Uh, and uh, I haven't heard back. Everyone uh, indicates that Larry Nichols is a very good man, that deeply loves Oklahoma City, uh, that he, for me personally, would be a tremendous ally on building density and walkability in a, a healthy city. But he and the, and the people around him are engaging in policy making similar to uh, the way a surgeon does surgery. They are telling everyone what to do and then executing. And it's not particularly democratic. You can have a benevolent plutocracy you could agree that what, what he's doing is best for the city, but it's still a plutocracy and not a representative democracy. Um, there is no evidence that he or anyone else in the Convention Center subcommittee has altered the decision making for their own personal gain or the gain of their companies. There's absolutely no evidence of that, and I want to make that clear. Um, but we've made, placed a tremendous amount of decision-making authority and policy and influence in one person's hands. And, and I think it's legitimate to ask the question, could any human being uh, objectively make decisions for the, for the betterment of, of all the people when so much uh, the, the Devon company is the ex-CEO of Devon, he's the chairman of the Urban Renewal Authority, we've made him uh, the chairman of the Alliance for Economic Development and just provided them that nonprofit with $700,000. He's on the board of the Mary Gardens Foundation, the Industrial and Cultural Activity Board, and until 2008, the Redevelopment Authority. Um, I, uh, I want to move past this, but I think that for there to be healing and for us to, uh, I, I think this, you know, I, I don't believe in just, in just holding resentments and not publicly voting them. I think the healthiest thing to do is put it out there instead of if, if, if festering. Let us vet it. Let some healing occur. Uh, let us figure out a way that the private sector and the firefighters cannot uh, mingle to that degree in our elections. Uh, and then let's move forward. Thank you.